And now it's time to start playing. So let's look at the settings that we're going to use to generate a new world. So first of all, some lazy new pack settings. I've got this set on all of the default settings, uh, so we'll just go through and change them. Population cap. Now, 200, a population of 200, although it's the default, that can get really rather laggy. So I'm going to change that to 100. Our population of 100 is the minimum to, to experience all of the features that the game has. The strict population cap tells includes children. Now we certainly don't want 100 adults and 220 children. So we'll change that to say 115. Yeah, that's about right. Visitor cap. 100 visitors is an awful lot. Again, we'd end up with quite a bit of lag, so we'll go for 50. Invaders, yes. Oh, the child cap is just the ratio, but the strict population cap and the population cap is fine. Invading soldier cap, monster cap, sure. I don't mind if we if we get more soldiers attacking us than we've got people. Cave-ins, I'm going to leave that at yes. If we get a dragon, I would turn that to no. Weather, artifacts, temperature, and tomb, pets, we'll leave all of those at yes. I'll tell you what those do. So all of these first five here and these ones above as well, if you shut the game, change the settings, reopen the game, they will affect your gameplay. So you can change these as they go along. So cave-ins, if you, uh, we'll talk about cave-ins in the game. Weather is, are you going to get rain or snow? And well, that's kind of part of the gameplay. Are you going to get artifacts? Yep, let's let's have strange moods. They're fun. We'll see those. Temperature, yeah. Now, if you turn temperature off, your water won't freeze and nobody will get injured by hot stuff. But they also won't walk over tiles that were once hot. But yes, we want to keep that on. And Tomb Pets is just... When they build a coffin, do they want to put a pet in it? I'm going to say no to that one, just because I like to decide on the fly whether or not a pet is going to go into a coffin. Aquifers. Now, this is one where it only affects at world creation, so it's only affected during world generation. So you can't switch aquifers off once you've got them. We don't want to play with aquifers. You want to play with aquifers at a point in time when it's something you specifically want to mess around with. They are a pain in the bum to deal with. So, no, we, we don't want aquifers. Uh, Gray's coefficient tells the game how much space you're going to need to keep your animals fed. Uh, we'll just leave that at default. Starting labours. It's neither here nor there. It's just when your dwarves arrive, do they have certain skills switched on? I'm actually going to switch that to no. And we'll see if that affects it. Because I don't know if that affects the migrant waves. So we'll find out. Uh, embark profiles. There, there are a bunch of embark profiles that are set up. We'll see those as we go along. I'm going to leave that on the default. Um, yeah, we don't need to worry about any of the other stuff there. Graphics, choose your graphics pack. I'm sticking with Phoebus. Phoebus is the default for Lazy Noob Pack. ASCII is the default for the game. So you can change your graphics pack at any point in time. All you need to do is to close your game, change the graphics on the Lazy Noob Pack, update your save game, reboot the game, and you'll have a different graphics pack. Liquid depth, I like to see that. You'll see when we play that uh, magma and water, uh, it will tell us whether it, just how deep the water is for each tile. Hide engravings, I like to keep that because engravings can be, can make the fortress look very, very busy. And I prefer it if it's a bit bland looking, it looks a bit smarter. Uh, very ground and show improvements. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we want that. Don't need to worry about any of those. Uh, utilities. Now, these be, because these are third-party tools, you can turn these on and off at any point in time. Uh, you double-click one to boot it. Um, but if we right-click one, so let's right-click Sound Sense, that will make it sticky. So it will now start as default. When it, as soon as we press Play Dwarf Fortress, Sound Sense will boot up. But Dwarf Therapist, we will we'll do that manually because we always get an error message unless there's a game running that it can read. Let's go to Advanced. Sound. I'm going to say no and then we'll turn the sounds on when we get into the game. Intro movie. I'm going to say no because I've seen the intro movie quite a lot. FPS counter displays what your FPS is in the corner of your screen. Personally, I find it distracting, so I don't have it on. Um, now I do, you don't have to do this, but I like to change the calculation FPS down to 30. The reason being is that that just slows down your dwarves at the very beginning of the game. A 30 FPS means that they move at a relatively slow rate so you can keep up with them. Uh, especially for a tutorial, I think that'd be quite useful. All right, auto saves. I want it to auto save every season, so we'll switch it to seasonal. Initial save. For my tutorial series, I'm going to say yes, because it would be awful if we had a crash and I hadn't saved it. Do I want it to pause on save? Mm, not bothered. Pause on load, yes. So this is as soon as we load a game or as soon as they arrive after embark, uh, do we want it to pause? Yes, we do. Backup saves? Normally, no. I'm going to say yes, but that's just because I'm recording a tutorial. Because it may be that I need to go back to an old save in order to explain something that happens later in the game. It's Normally, you would consider that to be a little bit cheaty, really. And compress saves? There's sometimes people have difficulties with the compressed saves. It can cause problems when you go to load an old save. I'm not sure whether or not I should advise everybody to turn this off, but because I'm recording a tutorial series and because I might need to refer to old saves, I want to make sure those saves work. So I'm going to say no. Uh, damp stone and warm stone. Yes, I would like them to pause it and tell me if they come across damp stone and warm stone. All right, last of all is DF hack. I want to enable DF hack, and there's a few things I want. So I don't want automatic job assignments. We'll manage that with Dwarf Therapist. I do want enhanced gameplay. I want oh i don't want mouse controls now df hack gives us some mouse controls by standard this just adds scrolling at the edge of the map which can be a little bit mm, annoying but i do want other automation plugins that just does some useful things you're not clicking quite so much and uh, oh i don't want performance tweaks no and i don't want sound sense so just those two all right, and now let's play. Okay, sound sensors booted up automatically. And what I'm going to do is when the music starts playing, I'm going to switch that off. Uh, I'm going to mute it because we're going to use the background music to the game. Um, I would like to see, and I'm going to show you guys as well, what exactly is going on with DF Hack while we play. Gives you some a useful visual idea if you just keep it open at the side. Tell you what's going on. Make it maybe just a touch smaller. Well, let's whiz it over there like that. All right. Um, sound sense we can minimize. As you can see, native flute is being ignored because we've removed it. Let's increase the size of this window. Now I could have set this as a default. But that will do for us. And we want to create a new world. Yeah, we know that it's an unstable version. 
All right, so what kind of world do we want to create? These are the parameters that we're setting up, which determines what kind of world we're going to visit. The defaults are pretty good, but it depends. If you suffer from lag, you might want to make everything a little bit lower, but I'm going to go for medium here. That's highlighted. It's fine. Uh, history. I'm going to leave that medium. It's fine. Now, the way history works is the shorter and we're going to be able to cut it off anyway, but the shorter the history is, the less civilizations you'll have and the more mythical beasts you'll have. So you can start at the very beginning of the world with the very first dwarves. You'll find that there are some limits if you do that, but it's an interesting way to play. So we'll go for the middle ground. We'll go for a medium history. Number of civilizations. That's how many other people are on the map with you. We'll go for medium. Number of sites on the map. We'll go medium. Number of beasts. Sure, we'll go medium. The natural savagery. So this is about the wild animals around the place. Normally, now this just depends on how confident are you in the game? How much of a challenge do you want? I usually go medium if I want to play a long fortress or high to very high. The same with beasts, actually. If I want to, uh, if I just want a, a quick fort that I'm going to lose relatively quickly, but it's going to be a lot of fun. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to put it on low. It'll give us more of an opportunity to experience all of the things that the game has to offer. And mineral occurrence, I'm going to turn it up to frequent. And what this means is that within the world, the the minerals are more commonly found. So we're going to have more ores on the map, wherever we go on the map. But yes, I'm happy with that. So let's go. Right, it is creating a world for us. Oh, did you see that? That was a road being created between some civilizations. So time is passing before our eyes. You can see the years counting up. We're in year 85, 86. Uh, and these are people, historical figures as the years pass. Peasants have become heroes and people have died events are happening so these are people slaying dragons and wars being fought uh, so this is the world itself is playing the game at the moment but on a much larger scale than we will and you can see in the background the map is changing because civilizations are growing and uh, the like I say wars are being fought and all kinds of things are going on. We'll probably find tombs and uh, um, goblin fortresses will have started to spread and biomes begin to change. Now, one thing to note is that purple is bad. So we see that there's kind of a patch of purple around here. All right, I've let it tick over to about year 150 and that'll do for us. So I'm going to press escape to finish the world generation. So I'm going to say right here, right now, at this point in time. Oh, did you just see that tower suddenly appear there? Yeah, but right here, right now, this is the point in time when we want to join this world at this point in history. So at this point in time, we're still in the age of myth. So there's going to be lots of mythical creatures. The which age you're in changes. Uh, you could be in the age of dragon. If there's a dragon that's been rampaging around the map, destroying lots of civilizations, you could be in the age of Hydra. Um, and they can bob back and forwards between different ages but the age of myth means that there is a lot of mythical creatures still alive and well so yes we want to use this world as it is so if we press continue then that will make time continue to tick over abort will take us back to the world generation screen we could look at this and say for whatever reason you might not fancy the map you can press abort uh, and do it again 
Uh, but we're going to use this world as it is. We'll just see what we've got. Okay, so now it has calculated all of the things. It's settled itself. And we, our world is called Comade Adela, which is the Realms of Wonder, which is a nice name. Now, one thing I would like to do is to press P to export the image and info of this world, because we might use that later. And this is the only time you can do it. So we'll press P and it will make an export of the information. At some point in time, we'll maybe go and have a look at that, but we'll, we'll do that way off in the future. And we'll press enter to accept. So now what it's doing is saving all of that information to file. And it'll then it'll return us back to the starting screen. So we've created a world to play in. One problem that you might experience during world generation is a crash. It's such a complex game that sometimes it will generate a set of circumstances that are mutually exclusive and the game will crash. Now, if that happens, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen the next time. So if you get a crash during world generation, just try again. The longer the history you try for, the more likely you are to get a crash. But it's still, especially on medium histories, it's quite rare. But yeah, the solution at the moment, it gets more and more stable as time goes on, but the solution at the moment, if you crash during world generation, is to just try generating a new world. There's a lot of random encounters. It follows chaos theory. So you can set up exactly the same parameters again and not get a crash, but your world will look completely different. And I think for the moment, that's probably a good place to leave this episode. In the next episode, what we'll do is we'll go into that world and we'll pick a place for our dwarves to try and carve out a, a niche for themselves. We'll have a look at what a lot of those colours and symbols and things on the map meant. Um, and we'll pick a place. We'll talk about what sort of places there are on the map and what kind of experience we might have in the different biomes and things that we'll find there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.